Hey Stitchers, your girl Chris here. Welcome or welcome back to my channel on social where it's totally cool to be obsessed with sewing. So for today's video, I have for you a sew along featuring the Hillary Top by Tasuti Fabrics. Now, if you didn't know, I'm taking part for the first time ever in the Make 9 challenge. Now, if you have no idea what Make 9 is, I'm gonna go ahead and leave the link to that video right here so you can go ahead and check it out. Now, basically, Make 9 is a challenge which encourages all kinds of creators to make nine projects for a given year. So in my case, I'm a sewist, so I'll be embarking on making nine different sewing projects for 2024. Now, as part of the challenge, you're required to sort of like plan out what your makes are going to be. And instead of identifying particular makes, I have identified categories of makes that I want to make for 2024. Now, as an additional twist to my challenge, I have decided that all of my projects will be made with indie patterns. And better yet, indie pattern companies that are completely new to me, which means I have never tried them before. Now, one of my categories for my challenge was tops. And I came across Tasuti Fabrics sometime last year. Specifically, I had seen a make of their um, Hillary top um, over there on Instagram, and I absolutely fell in love with the sleeve detail of the pattern and knew I wanted to make either this top or another Tasuti Fabrics pattern, which was the Ray top for my tops category. In the end, I decided to go with the Hillary top and you guys, I loved it so much, I made two versions almost back to back. Now for my first Hillary top, I did share a behind the soles video right here on my channel. So I'll go ahead and drop the link in so you can find it. In that video, I detailed my sizing, the fitting adjustments that I made, and I shared with you the process of fitting this pattern from start to end. Now at the end of that project, I went ahead and cut out a second Hillary top and filmed a sew along for you. And that is what I'll be sharing with you here today. Now, I recently reached out to Tesuti Fabrics and let them know I had filmed a sew along for the Hillary Top and just asked, you know, permission to share it here on my YouTube channel. It is an indie pattern company and I wasn't sure what their stance was on like sew alongs from independent sewers such as myself. So, you know, I just thought it would be nice to reach out and just find out from them what their views were. At the end of my discussions with them, they did agree to share with me a code, a special discount code just for all of you viewers who are watching my channel. So the code gives you 20% off the Hillary top and the code is Hillary PDF 20 all in capital letters and I'll go ahead and drop it right here in the video and down below in the description box so that you can refer to it. Now the code will be active for two months and will take you up to the 12th of May 2024. So just in case you join this bandwagon a little bit later and you're not seeing this video right when it was previewed, then you might still be able to benefit from that code, which again is valid until May the 12th, 2024. So if you've never given Tasuti Fabrics a try and you want to give a new pattern company a try, then I would absolutely recommend you try out their Hillary top and make use of my discount code. Now at the end of the sew along, you should have a top that looks like this. I am wearing the second iteration of my Hillary top, you guys. And I love this top. I think that the boat neckline is particularly flattering on me and you can never go wrong in my view with a peplum top. And again, I spoke already about this elastic sleeve detail. I had never come across this detail before and I have been sewing for six years. So I was particularly intrigued by um, this feature of this blouse. So again, this is the Hillary top and at the end of my sew along, if you follow along closely with me, then you should have a top that looks just like this. So let's get started, shall we? All right, so grab your pattern pieces. You'll need your front bodice, which is cut on the fold. You'll need your back bodice, also cut on the fold. You'll need to cut your front and back peplum pieces on the fold. Now, I did not have enough fabric to cut my peplum pieces on the fold. So what I did is I went ahead and added a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance so my peplum is going to have a center front and a center back seam. You'll also need to cut your sleeve pieces. You'll need to cut two. And then you'll need to cut your back facing and your front facing both on the fold. Those are your pattern pieces. So now we can get started. Now the instructions have you use violin strips 
at your front and back neckline to prevent it from stretching out. Now I don't have any villain strips, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stay stitch my neckline at an eighth of an inch because I think the seam allowance for the neckline to be facing is a quarter inch. So I'm going to go ahead and just stay stitch at one eighth of an inch on my front bodice neckline and then repeat the process on my back bodice neckline. Right, so my stay stitching is complete. And one tip when you're stay stitching, you want to start at the outer portion of your neckline and work your way in towards the center front and then stop and then go to the opposite side of your neckline and work your way into the center front. This prevents you from stretching your neckline outwards. Once your stay stitching is complete, you want to go ahead and stitch your side seams. So the seam allowance for the side seams is a half an inch. So I'm just going to pin my front and my back bodice pieces together at the side seams and then take it to the machine and stitch in at a half an inch seam allowance on both side seams. So my side seams have been sewn at a half an inch seam allowance and I went ahead and finished my seam using my serger. Now if you don't have a serger you can always pink your seam or you can do French seams on your side seams. So for my first iteration of this top, I did use French seams because it was a broderie anglaise. But on this version, I've decided to use my serger. So I've serged off my side seams and then I went ahead and pressed them towards the back bodice. Now, if we were following our instructions, the next step would be to put away our bodice portion and work on the skirt portion of this um, pattern. But I'm not going to do that. I think I want to finish up my bodice first before I move on to my skirt. And so I'm going to grab my facing pieces, which look like this, so that I can finish off the front and back neckline. Now, for your facing pieces, you want to make sure that you've interfaced your pieces. The instructions do have you interface your pieces. And I also went ahead and finished off the edge of my facing piece. Now, as per the instructions, you should finish your facing pieces with your serger and then fold it under at a quarter of an inch, press and top stitch. Now I am not going to fold this fabric under and top stitch. I'm quite happy with my facing piece being finished with the serger thread and I do want to reduce any bulk at my neckline. Now this is an Ankara fabric so it is probably um, a lot heavier than um, some of the recommended fabrics for this top and so I don't want to add any bulk at all to my neckline. So as I said, I've just finished off the um, edge of my facing and now I'm going to attach my facing pieces to my bodice pieces. Just a quick tip, because my bodice pieces look so similar, I did go ahead and put just a piece of tape and marked front on it. Now, even though I can differentiate my front from my back by the armhole notches, it's just so much quicker and easier just to be able to spot my tape. And I've done the same thing on my facing piece. I've just put a piece of tape and marked front on it. So I'm going to grab my front facing piece, which is this piece right here. And this is my front bodice piece. Now right sides together, I'm going to pin my front facing piece to my front bodice neckline. So I'm going to start here and pin and pin it in place all the way to the opposite side. All right, so my front facing has been pinned into place and I'm gonna take it to my machine and stitch at a quarter of an inch seam allowance right along the front neckline. Now, because I want to reduce the number of trips to my machine, I'm just gonna flip my bodice piece over so that I can see my back neckline. And I'm also going to pin my back neckline facing into place so that I can take them both to the machine and stitch both the front and back together using a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so my front and back facing pieces have been attached to the respective necklines. And now I need to go ahead and understitch the seam allowance to my facing. Now, before I do that, even though the instructions do not say to do this, I am gonna go ahead and trim down my facing seam allowance just a bit. Now, the seam allowance for the front neckline to the front facing is quite small only at a quarter of an inch and so arguably speaking you can probably skip this step but because i said i'm using an ankara fabric and want to reduce as much bulk as possible 
I am going to go ahead and trim away just a little bit of that seam allowance of the facing piece. Now I want to make sure that I'm moving the bodice piece out of the way. So I'm just pulling it away from my facing piece and holding it out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and trim down with my pinking shears just the facing seam allowance. Now you want to be sure not to catch your front bodice piece when you're trimming away and you also want to be sure that you're not catching your front bodice piece um, in your scissors. Um, hold your bodice piece away and then trim your facing piece. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off for my front neckline and repeat it on my back neckline. So this is what the neckline edge looks like once you've pinked your facing piece. So you can notice that the seam allowance on your facing piece is now smaller than the seam allowance on your bodice piece. And this step in the seam allowance just helps it to lay much flatter against the neckline. So the next step is to understitch your seam allowance to your facing piece. So you need to push your seam allowance up towards your facing piece. It's helpful if you go to your ironing board and just press it lightly into place. And then you need to flip it over, take it to your machine, and then run a, a very narrow stitch across your facing piece just to capture your seam allowance and attach it to your facing piece. Now, this will help your facing piece to roll nicely to the inside. So once you're finished and you've pressed it into place, you should have a very smooth and neat looking finish at your neckline. So I'm going to go ahead to my ironing board and just press my seam allowance to my facing piece and then over to my machine and edge stitch it into place. Right, so I have completed my understitching right at my front bodice neckline and, got, and have gone ahead and pressed it into place. And can you see what a beautifully finished neckline I have at my front bodice neckline? Now on my back piece, I did go ahead and do my understitching of the seam allowance to my back facing so I need now to take it to my ironing board and press my back neckline into place so that I can have a sharp, crisp neckline at my back neckline piece as well. All right, so both of my neckline pieces have now been pressed into place. And you guys, if it's one tip I have for you, never, ever, ever skip your understitching. It makes such a big difference in the look of your finished garment. Now, if you find that your clothes look sort of homemade, then it's important to double check that you're not missing crucial steps like doing your understitching and pressing, pressing, pressing all your seams into place. Now that we've finished our front bodice and our back bodice, then we're going to move on to the sleeves. So I have gone ahead and done a little prep work on my sleeves. Now I did go and finish um, the edges of my top sleeve using my serger and I repeated the process on the bottom sleeve hem. Now the instructions don't have you do this. Instead, the instructions ask you to stay stitch a quarter inch away from the top edge of your sleeve. But for me, it's easier and neater for me to use my serger. Now the distance between the edge of my looper threads and my needle thread on my serger is a quarter inch, which makes this a good guideline for me to use when trying to press under the quarter inch that the instructions asks for while simultaneously giving me a neat finish to my inner edge and even though this finish is not seen at the end of the garment it does help with the longevity of my make so i'm going to go ahead now and measure down an inch and a quarter from the raw edge and mark along the top edge of my my um sleeve so let's move this one out of the way so I can show you what I mean. All right, so this is my Nancy Zimmerman seam gorge. And I'm telling you guys, this is a staple in my sewing room. So if you don't know what this is, it's just a slider that makes positioning and marking um, lengths from your raw edges so much easier. And it's adjustable all the way down to five inches. So if you want to grab one of these, you can check it out in my Amazon store, which I have linked in the description below. So I'm just going to slide it to an inch and a quarter, which is right here. And then I'm going to line up um, the gauge at the edge of my seam allowance. So I'm going to line up my gauge at the edge of my sleeve 
and then I'm going to use the top guide to mark in an inch and a quarter from the raw edge. So I'm just going to go along the top of my sleeve, moving my gauge across and marking in one inch and a quarter from my raw edge. I'm going to repeat this process on the other sleeve. Now it might be a little bit difficult for you guys to see on camera because I am using my choco liner in white and it doesn't show very nicely on camera against this fabric. But my line is right here and I can see it. So once I've gone ahead and put my line in, I'm going to take it to my ironing board and press under at the one and a quarter inch line. All right, so I took it to my ironing board and I pressed wrong sides together along the guideline that I marked in. And this is what it looks like so far. Now the next step will be to go ahead and turn under the quarter inch from the edge of your sleeve right along the sleeve edge. So I've done it on one sleeve so I can show you what it looks like. So this is how the inside of my finished sleeve edge looks. So this is the initial one and a quarter inch marking that I pressed under. And then I also went ahead and pressed under a quarter inch right along the sleeve um, edge. So once that's done, this is what it looks like. I'm going to pin it into place, take it to my machine, and stitch an edge stitch one eighth of an inch along the inner portion of my sleeve so that at the end I can create a casing for the elastic. Since I'm working on creating the casing on my sleeve, I'm also going to put in my guideline along the hemline of my sleeve and press it into place just to create a guide for when I finish my sleeves. Now I'm not going to stitch anything just yet. For now, I'm just going to mark the guideline along the hem of my sleeve and press it into place. Now the casing at the sleeve hem is six eighths of an inch. So I'm just going to adjust my gauge down to the six eighths of an inch guideline, line it up with the hem of my sleeve as I did with the top of my sleeve and create my marking right along the sleeve which I can then press into place and serve as a guide. Now I just find it so much easier to have my guide pressed into place while my sleeve is flat, instead of trying to do this when the sleeve is already in the round. So this is just a little tip just to make life a little bit easier when we continue putting the sleeve piece together. Right, so I've gone ahead and edge stitched right along my casing this is what it looks like on the outside of my sleeve and this is what it looks like on the inside of my sleeve i also went ahead and pressed into place the guide for my sleeve hem facing now as i said before we're not going to stitch this into place just yet but it's always so much more helpful to have a guide um, so that i can edge stitch it much easier when the time comes so the next step is going to be to pin your sleeves right side together at the side seam and then stitch at a half, an, half of an inch seam allowance along the sleeve seam. Then I'm going to finish it off with my serger and press it towards the back of my sleeve. All right, so I finished off my sleeve seam by stitching it at a half an inch seam allowance, doing my serger finish and pressing it towards the back. Now at this stage, the instructions would have you thread your elastic through your upper sleeve, but I'm not going to do it just yet. I'm going to hold off on that and I'm going to go ahead instead and finish off my lower sleeve hem casing. So that guide that we had pressed into place earlier on will come in quite handy right now for doing this portion of the sleeve. Now the sleeve is now in the round and as you can appreciate, marking and pressing it into place now in the round would be a little bit more challenging than just trying to um, pin it in place now and stitching it down. So that's why we went ahead and prepped it in an earlier step. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pin it into place right around my sleeve hem and then I'm going to edge stitch it almost the full way around the sleeve leaving about a half of an inch of a gap so that I can thread my elastic through the casing and then I can go ahead and close it up right after. So I'm going to take this to my machine now and stitch my lower casing into place. So both my upper and lower sleeve casings have been completed and now it's time for the elastic. 
Now for the upper sleeve, the instructions ask you to use a 6 eighths of an inch um, wide elastic cut at 7 inches. So I'm just going to go ahead and measure off 7 inches. Like so. And then the instructions have you cut this in half. Now you're going to use three and a half inches for each shoulder seam. So it doesn't seem like a lot, but I've tried this already on my first version and it does work perfectly. So I'm just going to cut this now in half. So this is going to be for my shoulder seam. Now for the wrist, it asks you to use quarter inch elastic and it says to measure off 16 inches cut in half. So that's going to give you eight inch per wrist. So I'm just going to go and measure off the eight inches, which is right about here. And I'm going to cut that. And then I'm going to use my first cut piece as a guide for my second piece. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut right here. So I now have two eight inch pieces of elastic for my wrist. So the next step is to thread the elastic through the, through the wrist and through the shoulder. Now, when I'm working with elastic, I do like to mark my elastic on the same sides. So if this is the right side of my wrist elastic, I'm going to put a mark on this end and a mark on this end. So that when I thread it through my casing, I can make sure that my elastic doesn't twist. So now that I've marked it, I can go ahead and use my safety pin. Now I know there are lots of fancy gadgets for threading elastic, but I'm just going to use a safety pin and thread this through my wrist casing. So this is one sleeve. I have gone ahead and left a very small gap right here. And I'm going to thread this now through my casing. So we've made it right the way, way around. I'm just going to tug on my sleeve. So this is the right side of my elastic. The marking is sticking up. And I just pinned this one into place so it wouldn't get caught in my seam. So both are right sides up, like so. And now I'm just going to overlap them right here. Put a pin in place and then go ahead to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch my elastic pieces together. Once I've done that, then I'm going to go ahead and close up the gap that I left in my sleeve um, hem. And then I'll repeat the process for my other sleeve and then do the same thing for the casing at the shoulder. All right, so we now have completed sleeves. I went ahead and um, put the elastic in at the shoulder line and have basted it in place with some zigzag stitches. I've also completed the elastic at the sleeve hemline and as an added layer of security, I have um, stitched in the ditch right at the sleeve seam to try and prevent the, the elastic from twisting. Now, whenever I'm working with an elastic casing in the round, such as with sleeves, I do like to try and stitch in the ditch right at the sleeve seam line. Now, obviously this is a one piece sleeve and so there's only one seam. And so I've only um, stitched in the ditch at this one seam. If there were multiple seams, as if you were um, working with a two piece sleeve, for example, then I would want to go ahead and stitch in the ditch at every seam line. And this just helps to prevent the elastic from twisting in the casing um, when wearing and washing and whatnot. So now that that's done, the next step would be to introduce these sleeves into the bodice. All right, so it's time to start making sense of all of these pattern pieces. So these are my two sleeve pieces, and this is the bodice piece that we had completed earlier. So at this step, it's time now to introduce the sleeve into the bodice. So I'm going to turn it on the side so that I can see the arm side curve. So I need to find the sleeve that matches with the curve. So I'm looking at my notches 
and we have a single notch on this side and a double notch on this side. So this is the back of my sleeve. This is the front of my sleeve. So I'm going to line up my side seam with the side seam of my sleeve right here. All right, so I'm going to hold them in place and I'm using this clover fork pin to keep my side seams together. All right, if I flip my sleeve up, I can check to see whether my side seams are likely to be lined up and they look pretty good. So I'm going to flip it back down and I'm going to pin the back portion of my sleeve into place. So let's match up my notches right here and place a pin. And then we're going to move to the, the top of the sleeve. Now your finished sleeve needs to line up with your finished bodice piece, not the facing piece, just the bodice piece, because eventually the facing piece has to flip back on top of the sleeve and be sewn into place and turned right side out. So for now, we're going to line up the top edge of the sleeve right at the seam that joins the, the um, bodice piece to the facing piece. So I've got mine in place and I'm just going to pop a pin. So I'm going to keep pinning right away around my arm side and then stitch it into place. And then I'll be back to show you what it looks like. All right, so both of my sleeves are in and it's time now to attach the facing pieces to the bodice piece. So to finish the facing, the sleeve is right side together with the bodice. So the facing piece now needs to go um, right side of facing to wrong side of sleeve. So we're gonna fold the facing back on top of the sleeve so that the um, sleeve is now sandwiched between the bodice front and the facing. And we need to pin it in place and then stitch at a half inch seam allowance to attach our facing piece. So once it's pinned into place, I'm going to stitch it at a half inch seam allowance. And I'm going to repeat this same process um, for every part where the facing needs to be attached to the bodice. So I'm doing it here and then I'm going to repeat the process um, on the opposite side. Right, so my facing pieces have been attached to my bodice and I went ahead and finished off my arm side seam. So this is what it's looking like. It looks a little bit clumsy because the front and the back facing pieces are now sort of on top of one another. But once we turn the, the facings right side out where they should be, then um, it will look a lot less clumsy. Now, a lot of people would recommend snipping the corner of your facing piece to get a sharp edge but I am not going to do that. Instead, I am going to crease my seam allowance right here and create a right angle at the top of my seam and at my side seam. And then holding this point right here, I'm just going to push it in to my facing like so and flip it outward. So this is what I end up with, a nice sharp edge. Now, just to push it up just a little bit more, I'm going to just use this uh, manicure stick that I have laying around and push it up into the corners of my seams. And this is what we end up with. Now, I do have just a tiny notch between my bodice and my sleeve, which means that I probably could have pushed my um, sleeve closer to my body seam when I was attaching my facing but this is not going to bother me too much and in fact I don't think it's going to be very visible to the naked eye so I'm going to repeat this process for the um, other edges so again um, let's just tie off this serger thread so I'm just going to tie it and just clip it off and again, I'm just going to fold my seam allowance inwards 
fold it and then flip my facing outwards and then once it's out I'm just going to use my stick just to push it up and make sure it's nice and sharp so I haven't trimmed the edges of my seam and I still have a nice sharp edge at my bodice line right so my facing is attached my sleeves are attached let's turn this baby right side out all right so this is what she's looking like so far and with the sleeves in we can now give this a try on and see if we're happy with the length of our bodice because the um waistline seam is relatively straight on this pattern it will be easy to go ahead and shorten it by a half inch or an inch if necessary now i did shorten this pattern by two inches um on my paper pattern but it might need to be shortened i anticipate by an additional half inch but i didn't want to shorten it by a further half inch on my paper pattern before i checked how this body how this bodice was laying on me so again i shortened it by two inches on the flat paper pattern but now that i have my sleeves introduced into the bodice of my garment i can go ahead and give this baby a try on all right so it's time for a fit check and this is where we're at with the hillary top now, as I said before, on this version, I did shorten my bodice by two inches. So at the side seam, my waistline hits right about here. Now, the seam allowance for the bodice to the peplum is a half inch seam allowance. So I'm feeling a little bit more confident that once I attach my peplum portion to my bodice portion, that my seam allowance will sit very close to where I need it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead back to my sewing table I'm going to pin the peplum piece to the bodice piece and then head over to my sewing machine to attach it. And then I'll be back to show you guys what it's looking like then. All right, so I've grabbed my skirt pieces and I have gone ahead already and put the notches in the top part of my skirt. Now you will notice that the bottom of my skirt is a little bit longer than the pattern. And that is because I lengthened my skirt portion by three quarters of an inch. Just because I shortened the bodice by two inches, I just wanted to maintain just a little balance. And so I went ahead and lengthened the peplum portion of this pattern by six eighths of an inch. Now again, this pattern piece is meant to be cut on the fold, but because I did not have enough fabric, um, as I explained earlier, I went ahead and left the seam allowance at my center front and my center back. So I'm gonna go ahead now and stitch um, the left and right front pieces together the left and right back pieces together so that i can have one long piece and then i can go ahead and put my pleats in right so i've gone ahead and attached both my left and my right front pieces and there's actually a seam now that runs right down here now i didn't make any attempt to pattern match um, my center front seam although i probably should have but it doesn't look too badly and i don't think that you'll be able to notice the seam once i put my pleats in now the instructions will have you join your front piece, which is this one, to the corresponding back piece, and then go ahead and put your pleats in. But I am going to actually put my pleats in my front piece first, and then repeat the process on my back skirt piece. All right, so let's put some pleats in. So I've made my snips at the top of my skirt, and I'm just gonna fold my skirt along my first snip and bring it to my second snip and then put a pin. I'm then gonna fold my third snip right here and bring it back inwards to my second snip right here so that we can create some box pleats. So this is gonna be pleat number one. As we go across, I'm gonna pinch this snip and bring it in right here pin it into place and then pinch this snip and bring it back towards my first pleat and pin it into place right here so i'm going to go ahead and repeat this process right along the 
left side of my skirt front and then along the right side of my skirt front and then on my back skirt pieces. All right, so my front skirt peplum piece has all been pleated and I'm gonna go ahead and run a stay stitch right along my pleats to hold them in place and then repeat the process for my back skirt piece. Once I'm done that, I will finish off my side seams using my serger and then join my front skirt piece to my back skirt piece, pressing my side seams open. All right, so we have our bodice piece ready to attach the skirt peplum. Now I did go ahead and stay stitch along the pleating of my peplum, although I still have some pins in place. So you know that means your girl sewed over some pins, which is probably an absolute no-no for a lot of you. But I did take my time to make sure that my machine needle did not hit my pins. So I've got them all stay stitched in place and now I'm going to attach them right sides together with my bodice. So this is my front section of my peplum and this is the front section of my bodice piece. So I'm just going to flip the front section of my skirt over the front section of the bodice piece and then line up my side seams and start pinning it into place. Now the opposite side seam and we're pinning So with the side seams pinned into place, I can go ahead now and pin the entire peplum along the front bodice and the back bodice and then take it to my machine and stitch it together using a half inch seam allowance, after which time I will finish off my seams with my serger. All right, you guys, so I've put the elastic in my casing and we are cooking with gas. So this is what my Hillary top now looks like. And I feel like she's hitting perfectly at my natural waist. Now, if I bend to the side where all of my rolls are, there's a slight dip in my waistline and I feel like my elastic is hitting quite snugly um, at my natural waistline. Now, I really, really like how she looks. I just need to go ahead and finish off the hem of this blouse. Now, even though I made this blouse once before, on my first version, I did go ahead and use the scalloped edge that came with the broderie anglaise fabric. Now, on this version, I actually need to go ahead and turn the double hem. Now, I want to say it's not going to be more than a half inch hem, like a quarter inch double turned, but I do need to verify before I finish up my hem. So this is what she's looking like. Tell me if you like her, and if you don't like her, then you don't have no taste, girl, because this one is dope. I love it. And I can imagine it paired with some arm um, tapered pants or with a pencil skirt, but we'll see how we get on with styling her once she is complete. So back to my sewing table so I can go ahead and work out this hem. There you have it, you guys. That was my sew along featuring the Hillary Top by Tasuti Fabrics. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the sew along. And if you did, be sure to go ahead and give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know whether this is the first time you have tried out Tasuti Fabrics and what you think of your final garment. Now, if you have made it this far into my video, please consider hitting the subscribe icon and turning on your notification bell so you never miss any of my upcoming videos. Subscriptions cost you absolutely nothing, guys, but it does guarantee you a spot right here with me in my YouTube sewing community. So that's all I needed to share with you guys today, and I'll be back hopefully on Friday with something new. So until then, stay calm, stay cool, stay safe, and absolutely keep sewing. Peace.